Good morning, good afternoon to all my brothers and sisters there in Kasese. Um We bring greetings to you all the way from the U.S. Uh, in the city, the Chicago uh, metro area, uh, the third largest city in the U.S. Uh, we bring uh, love, uh, our regards to everyone there. Uh, we'd like to extend, before we uh, begin, um, our um, great gratitude towards uh, Pastor Nexon uh, for the invitation. Uh, also, I uh, would be remiss if I didn't mention um, Pastor Julius uh, and really all of the leaders and pastors and the men and women of God whom we consider our brothers and sisters, some of you which we may have met during the pastor's conference, the Equip to Win, um, Equip to Serve uh, conference uh, there that um, we were so blessed to be a part of. Um, uh, you may have noticed I have uh, an extremely handsome young man sitting next to me. Um, this is Minister Greg, uh, my son, uh, a power, a voice uh, for this generation. And what we wanted to do as a father and son, uh, we wanted to change it up a little bit as opposed to perhaps standing at a podium and preaching, we wanted to just have some dialogue, uh, some conversation, um, and just to uh, exhort, uh, perhaps uh, prophetically uh, encourage you, um, because what you're facing there, uh, we're also facing here in the U.S. And in fact, believers all over the world are really facing uh, some of the same adversity and difficulties and problems and all. So uh, before we get started, I want to again um, just uh, have uh, my son, uh, Minister Greg, uh, to just uh, again formally introduce himself and to greet you. And then we're going to uh, just jump into the word. We're going to read some scripture and we're just going to talk as the Lord has given us again, by um, way of to encourage you so that you can take something away from this um, towards your families, your marriages, your ministries, um, and your own relationship with God. So at this time, I'm just going to have uh, Minister Greg to just uh, greet you, and then we're going to um, read the word. Hi, my name is Gregory Moyes, same as my father, Pastor Greg here, and we. I just want to again just reiterate just to say thank you to pastor nexon and pastor julius just to um thank on behalf of our family and behalf of uh where we're from uh we're here in chicago like my father said and we're just going to hear just to encourage and just to build you guys up um it's a tough time especially for you and your family and everybody that you guys are around and are close with but god's still in control God's still on the throne, and God is still good. Um, so I just wanted to just reiterate just to thank you um, from the bottom of my heart and just on behalf of my whole family, just say we're doing this for you, and we all serve the one and only good God. So I just wanted to enter in and start this uh, video with prayer. So let's get straight to it. Father God, I just thank you for this day. I yes. just thank you just for another day of your creation, Father God. I just thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for you being a Father over us, for yes. Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you just for waking us thank up you, and getting Jesus. through another day, Father God. Thank you for all the people that are at this conference in the morning, seeking and yearning, expecting from you, Father God. Let them hear your voice. Let them hear um, and have an encounter with you, Father God. Let your spirit really just guide them in this tough time, Father God. Let them hear it like never before. Let your glory and let your power fall in Kinsasis and Uganda, all across where they're from, in that country, in that city, Father God. I just release a hedge of protection over everybody financially, yes. Um, yes. spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and just um, give them a burden just to do more. Do more with even less, Father God. I just pray that you just really guide and help them um, in this time, um, captivate their hearts and minds, Father God, 
to just really just strive after you with everything they have. Not just not strive, but really just yearn and um, long for you, Father God, above all anything yes. else. Yes. So I just pray this in your name, and I just pray that anything that is said, we will manifest it in ourselves, um, and men, um, and everybody at uh, the conference this morning just starts manifesting it as well, Father God. So I just pray this in the name of Jesus, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> and I think um, as you're sitting there, as you're listening, amen, can you give us uh, just an agreement, uh, a loud amen as well for what God has already been doing in your midst, uh, for what um, he is doing now, and for what he's going to do uh, not only through this conference, um, but purpose and destiny wise uh, for you, uh, your marriages, your family, uh, your ministry, your churches, uh, your community, uh, the impact that God has called each and every one of you and God knows you by name. So let's uh, get into uh, this passage of scripture, um, Philippians chapter three, and we want to um, specifically focus on um, the verses starting at verse 12. Again, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, writing this letter to the church at Philippi. And as a matter of fact, he was in jail writing this. And historians tell us that this is about 25 years after um, his um, coming to the Lord, um, his conversion and all. Um, so he's got a, a track record, some history um, with the believers at that time. Uh, but the thing that uh, I think stood out uh, for both myself and Minister Greg was pretty much how he even opened yeah. the um, this letter where he begins to the first part of chapter three, uh, which he, his genealogy, his resume, his history, his family history, his lineage, all of this was um, just, um, you know, there was just absolutely no one that could really top that. Yet, Paul still was at the posture of his heart was one that um, I'm still striving for perfection. And perfection meaning I'm still pursuing and chasing hard after maturity. Uh, so if Paul, the Apostle Paul, if that was a place that he was at, where does that leave us? Even in the year of 2020 and COVID-19. So. So, Minister Greg, what, I mean, just from your, uh, from what you see, um, let's say amongst your generation, um, what, what are some of the things that uh, you're hearing God say uh, as a result of going through all of this and as we get into this scripture about pressing on and moving forward, uh, just kind of, what are some of the things, just the preliminary thoughts? Some of the thoughts that... Um Holy Spirit has really been putting on my heart is, uh, especially for my generation, and this may coincide for other generations and anybody that's um, at the conference this morning or this afternoon, is we're lacking intimacy. Mm -hmm. And we're also lacking the, the mind of Christ. We're, we're lacking so much, and this year has really exposed a lot of uh, people, quote unquote believers, hmm. um, quote unquote Christians, uh, for their lack of faith and for their lack of effort as well. Hmm. It's just starting to um, ex expose a lot of disbelief in different areas in their life that needed to be um, exposed in the light, maybe not as uh, prevalent as this year has done it. But when you look at scripture and you look at Paul saying, press on, mm -hmm. press is a verb. Press is not an adjective. It's not a pronoun. It's a verb. A verb requires action. Mm -hmm. An action requires movement. So with that being said, regardless of the situation, regardless of what's going on, you have to move. Yes. 
and you have to press on regardless of what's happening inside you around you or anything else so i feel like my generation is really lacking that intimacy and really lacking the pressing on spirit to uh, really move and i just feel like that needs to be um brought back up so we can start going towards that because we can't press mm -hmm. on if we don't know how to go on Amen. so i just feel like that really needs to be um start being said and start being uh moved throughout our gen my generation and other generations previous or to come just to reiterate that um importance so that's one of the things that's really happening in my generation that i feel like needs to happen to go forward to press on amen and that is just a powerful powerful thought powerful uh, message there um as minister greg says uh, really it transcends all generations um for example uh, paul uh, let's just read a couple of these verses real quick again this is philippians chapter 3 and i'm going to read uh, starting at verse 12 and this is the apostle paul speaking and he says, not that I have already obtained all this. Okay, he, he just, you know, preface all of that with all the things that in spite of his lineage and his, and his family history and resume and all, he felt that he was still lacking in areas as it relates to maturity. Um, and it's nothing like adversity to expose or shine a light on the areas that are lacking. Uh, so he says, I uh, obtain all this or have already been made perfect. Again, that word perfect there, um, think of it as growth, maturity. Am I maturing? Am I growing in the Lord, even um, as a, um, a pastor or minister of the gospel or leader or um, whatever vocation you happen to be, uh, but especially leaders uh, that God has called um, in the church and just in the body of Christ, um, we, we're still, we are still striving and, 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 if you will, chasing after and, and to embrace uh, that um, degree and level of maturity. And I feel like um, for me, uh, Holy Spirit has really given me this, especially um, while I was in my first semester of college, that we're not, we don't have to strive for God. Mm -hmm. We don't have to beg for his presence. We don't have to beg for his movement. It's just about making ourselves a living sacrifice. And you see it all throughout the Bible, even with um, Abraham and his son, mm -hmm. when he was about to sacrifice his own son for what God, an angel had uh, told him to do until the last minute an angel said, um, no, don't do this. So it, it's, it's the faith that gets us to that point in the first place, saying, God, no matter what you have me do, no matter what circumstance I'm in, no matter what, I still trust you, I still follow you, and I still want to press on. And I feel like to press on, you don't you don't have to strive to press on you just have to say god i'm willing and then it just flows easier because striving to do something it's something that you have to do we don't have um to do anything for god we is it do you really want to mm -hmm. so god's not asking us to make us um slaves he's just making he says um in his word that he doesn't call us servants anymore he calls us friends because a servant doesn't know what his master's intentions are, don't know what his master's plans are, but a friend knows. So we're called to really know our Lord, our Savior Jesus, so that we can really um, daily take up our cross, die to ourselves, and just press on towards that goal. And right now in this year, that goal is really just to press on to go deeper and go, uh, go beyond what we thought our limits were. Especially because this year, 2020, it's been one heck of a year. <laughs> but above all, pressing on has been a constant goal from January until now we're looking, look, we're in December. Mm -hmm. It's been a constant goal, just pressing on. 
and it's different for everybody but what is pressing on for you look in your life what does that look like in your life so i would just challenge you today just to say holy spirit what am i pressing on towards what 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 do i need to specifically focus on mm. going into the next year about pressing on so that's one of the things i would just challenge you to do and just say god i'm willing i acknowledge that i'm struggling but pinpoint what i need to press on towards so i can get to that amen amen and so just to continue that thought uh, Paul says, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Okay. Uh, verse 13 says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider uh, myself yet to have taken hold of it. In other words, he's not attained, as we mentioned earlier. He's not accomplished that yet uh, to take, and hold, take hold of it. But one thing I do, okay, and this is something that if you're taking notes, uh, make no, and there are many points, uh, excellent points that uh, Minister Greg has made. Um, but as far as, as it relates to Paul's writing himself, uh, again, make, make a, a note of that. It says, brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining towards what is ahead, okay? It says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if, and if on some point you think differently, but that too, God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. So again, what, what, what is Paul saying there? Again, he's just summarizing what we've already been talking about, okay? As Minister Greg has said that in the year 2020, if you just take the number itself, um, 2020 eyesight, um, just if you would go to an eye doctor or an optometrist, 2020 eyesight is considered to be um, pretty much uh, at, the, at the top. It, it, it's, uh, I would dare say, almost perfect eyesight, if you will. And so what has 2020 uh, given us and afforded and provided us uh, for the believer this past year? It has given us, uh, not only just, it just doesn't stop at physical eyesight, uh, but um, spiritual eyesight, right? The opening the eyes of our understanding, as Paul's uh, mentioned in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 that there are things that we thought uh, we had to have uh, that we couldn't live without that we just needed and through this year we've seen otherwise God has given us insight so that spiritual 2020 eyesight and insight into the things of God that really really matter and this is true whether you're there uh, in Uganda you know you um, I mean, we have uh, some great men and women of God right there in the room there. There is greatness in the room there. Um, but all over the world, you know, for those that have been listening to what the spirit of the Lord has, has been saying, because uh, speaking, because God has been speaking and he's been speaking loud and clear uh, for those that have a heart and a posture of uh, wanting to embrace again not what I want to hear, but what is the spirit of God saying to the church today? And especially to the leaders. As the leaders go, so goes the rest of the body. As the head goes, so goes the rest of the body. And so 2020, um, you know, we can just stop and focus on the adversity and difficulty, but more than ever, it should highlight and and, and focus on more than ever the greatness of our God because if you're sitting there we're sitting here um, we're, we've made it uh, God has um, been faithful he's blessed uh, he's done exceedingly abundantly above all in spite of everything and we all have gone through difficulties I know uh, if you're like us 
Um, there are those that either we've lost uh, individuals, friends, uh, or know of those that have lost a one. Everyone's been touched by this COVID-19, but in spite of that, okay, what the Holy Spirit is saying, what we're encouraging, what we want to encourage you is to keep pressing on. You know, giving up is not an option. As I like to say, you know, the thought of giving up, which has crossed all of our minds at some point, it may be a reason, it may be an excuse, it may even be a choice, but it's not an option for the, the man or woman of God that is going to pursue his or her destiny and walk out their purpose. So we, again, uh, prophetically, through the word, uh, words of encouragement, exhortation, we want to encourage you that in spite of it, in spite of what you've gone through, uh, in spite of the e emotional, uh, perhaps, uh, things that you've gone through, perhaps in spite of what maybe your family has experienced, in spite of what uh, your church and your ministry has gone through, to keep pressing on, keep pressing on. That we have no other option but to keep pressing on for those that are hungering after God and wanting to pursue everything. God is incomplete. Uh, wouldn't you say, Minister Greg, that God uh, is in control? He's never lost control. Yeah. And if his hand is on our lives, which it is, okay, then if his hand is on our life, then everything that happens to us has to go through his fingers. And so he's aware of what's happening. And so he will work everything for uh, our good as he has, uh, for your good, which he has, which he's doing. So what, what would you say just to encourage along those lines that, that God is working even in, even if we don't understand it and can't see it? Um, I would definitely just agree with uh, Pastor Greg and just say that especially everything that touches um, God's hand has to go through it to us. Mm -hmm. So everything that touches us has to go through his hand. So enough, everything that's happening this year, everything that's happening personally to you and your family, it's not an accident. It's not something that God said, oops because God doesn't have any oops <laughs> moments. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show you that even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of all of this, God still had this happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is that with this pandemic, there has been nothing but constant growth. Even mm -hmm. you even you think about um, people that have tested positive, they've had to grow from that. Mm -hmm or people that have lost people to the pandemic or whatever the circumstances may be, they've had to grow this year like never before because it's um, a new step was required of them. They had to go to another level they thought they never had. So that's what goes to show you like, like what I uh, reiterated before, pushing past our limits, pressing on past our limits. And no matter what um, we go through, just saying, God, it's a new day. You woke me up today. The like the likely the likeliness of waking up in 2020 is very slim. Mm. People are passing away left, right, up, down, diagonal, whatever the case may be. But it's something about just simple life that mm. just really gets to me, especially this year. Is we take that so much for granted. And I would just say uh, keep a keep a, a kindness mm -hmm. fruit because uh, one of the fruit of the spirit is kindness. So keep a constant kindness in your hearts and towards other people and towards yourself. And no matter what the situation is, just keep pressing on toward what you need to be. Just hear and then listen for Holy Spirit's voice, and then just urge. Get that urge, no matter if you feel like it or not just to keep pressing on because we can't lack Amen. in this time. This time period isn't made for lacking. All the people that want to lack, I don't know what to tell you, but all the people that want to press on, 
just hear this message and just press on regardless of the circumstances. So I would just say keep a kindness in your heart and keep a gentleness and just keep a steadfast mind towards what God is wanting you to do in this time. Amen. Amen. Um, that is some weighty and very meaty words of uh, encouragement. <clears throat> and um, we can't emphasize that enough. We can't emphasize it enough. Um, there are a couple other points that things that we really want to, that Paul is um, uh, in this passage that's uh, buried, if you will, that we want to bring out. Basically, this the entire uh, context where he's talking about pressing on towards the goal to win the prize. Okay. Um, not only is it talking about the Christian uh, growth process, but he's using um, the sim uh, symbolism, the analogy, if you will, of sports, of a runner, of being in a race. Okay, uh, We're all in the same race. We may have a different course, but we're all in the same race. My course may be just straight ahead. Uh, your course may be uh, going around right curves and, and um, with um, pebbles and rocks and stones and, and, and so on else. It just may be a smooth surface. Whatever it may be, okay, God is, a, I mean, intimately aware of what he's called you to do and he's equipped you to do just that. And so this whole, the imagery there is about someone being in a race and so you, my brother and sister, you're in a race. We're in a race. This is a spiritual race. And so this is what Paul is talking about here. So in order to uh, win the prize, what? You can't give up, right? Yeah. You, you have to press through no matter what. Uh, you may, there may be, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, 50 other runners in that race. And everyone may be ahead of you. <laughs> But, you know, what God is saying, you know, is for you, what he's called you to do, okay, is to continue so that you can win the prize. Yes, everyone wants to win the prize, but also, you know, um, it's, you're also a winner um, by achieving and, and uh, embracing, again, what God has called you to do. Now, if you give up. You'll, you'll never know. You'll never attain. You'll never uh, embrace, you know, uh, the prize uh, for you. And we're talking about destiny and purpose. So what we want to do is uh, we want to um, uh, bring out a couple of more points um, in the next segment of, um, um, of our talk, our conversation with you. And so uh, we're going to pause just for a, a little bit. Then we're going to come right back with the next segment, and then we're going to wrap this up for you. Um, we thank you for, we love you, and we thank you for just being there and for what God is saying. Um, so sit tight. Uh, we will be right back. Amen. Again, so we want to uh, just pick up where we left off last time. Um, again, um, it, this is kind of different, perhaps, uh, maybe an informal touch, but this is kind of how God led us. Um, we wanted to uh, just share with you as if you were uh, at our home, uh, we were um, having dinner or something, and we were talking. Um, and so it's almost like a one on one, even though we know that there are multiple. Uh, people there attending, uh, leaders and, and men and women of God. Um, so prayerfully, you know, God um, is and has and will continue to speak to your heart even once we're done uh, with our sharing here. Uh, but we just wanted to pick up again on the thought of what Paul, the imagery there that Paul was talking about. Again, uh, the whole thought behind that um, race and the running um, is uh, an idea of sports, sporting event. It's something that uh, 
those that uh, the listeners, the hearers, those that Paul was talking to could easily relate to. Um, just as uh, sports uh, is a very huge, big uh, event, whether it's soccer, um, um, whatever it may be, whatever sports, it's, it's huge. It's a big thing, especially here in the U.S., so much so that um, the athletes and the sporting events have almost been elevated to almost like a godlike uh, point. And so, so was it, so such was the case then. So when Paul talked about running the race, every listener could immediately embrace and understand. He, they knew exactly, they could relate to what he was talking about. And so again, the thought behind that is, um, it's not so much how you began, you know, but it's certainly if you begin, but more importantly, it's how you finish and if you finish. And you will never finish if you don't begin, and you will never finish if you give up. And so that's the, the thought that we want to leave with you. Uh, the thing is, with uh, as um, individuals, as human beings, uh, we love things that are tested, okay? If I... You know, sitting on this chair, these chairs, um, they've gone through what's called uh, Q&A, quality and assurance, okay? They, they've been thoroughly tested for a, a certain amount of weight and sturdiness and structure and all of that. Uh, our cars or our, um, you, you name it, the things that we use in life, uh, we, we like the idea that th those things have been tested thoroughly tested so that we know that when we get to the point of using them, that the quality uh, is absolutely 100%. It's on point um, and that there are no flaws or failures. However, we don't like to be tested. We don't like to go through tests ourselves. However, the year of 2020, um, COVID-19 and everything else that has been, I would dare say, a year of testing for all of us, okay? That is not to put the emphasis on the test, uh, but just the fact that, you know what? Uh, we've come through the test. We, we have a great big God, again, whose hand is upon our lives, uh, our lives, your lives, your, your, those lives of your family, those of your church family. Um, so it, it's a time of, of testing, uh, and a race is just that. It's a time of testing. Can you endure? Can you persevere? And I, I uh, scripture that comes to mind, the, the narrative of Peter and the disciples being in the boat. And they see what looks like a ghost walking on the water. Okay. And then they finally recognize, uh, especially Peter, that that was Jesus. They engage in conversation, uh, Peter and Jesus, where Jesus extends the invitation to get out of the boat. And the only recourse was to either start walking on the water or sink and drown. Okay, so if, uh, if you're like me uh, and Peter and Minister Greg and all, you're going like, okay, well, what is Jesus you know, if he's inviting me to walk on the water, then he certainly has a plan uh, for me to uh, make it through. Uh, and he's equipping me uh, to um, just uh, pass the test, if you will. Okay. So, so Peter uh, steps on the water, gets out of the boat. Uh, and for a period of time, the, the Bible doesn't really go into detail how long it was, but he was on the water for a certain time. Then he began to sink. Okay. And just uh, make a long story short, out of, after all of that, Jesus' conclusion was that Peter, okay, uh, ye of, you of little faith. Okay. Now, if you're like me, Minister Greg, 
you know, I'm wondering, okay, well, he's the only one that got out of the boat. How can he be one who is possessing small faith? You know, well, the thought behind that is it's not so much the size, the volume, how big the faith is. What Jesus is saying there and the deeper meaning there is that you of little faith, in other words, your faith did not endure. It was the duration of it, not how big or how large, or how loud, or how sizable, but it, it's how uh, much the endurance, the perseverance factor. And so we, we've come, you know, and we are sharing with you all the way from Chicago and the U.S. to you, our friends uh, and um, brothers and sisters, um, our family, uh, really, to encourage you that it's not about how much faith you have, but that your faith fail you not, that your faith endures, that your faith uh, perseveres. And this has been a year where the testing of our faith is just that, that God wants us to come through uh, again to finish the race where we are not found deficient or lacking in any way. So in other words, we can't, you know, um, our goal should not be to try to wiggle out of something, but to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to say, okay, God, what are you saying? What is it that I'm supposed to learn in this hour, in this season? What's the teachable moment? And to embrace that and to learn everything that there is that from this and therein lies uh, reaching the goal and finishing the race. So, Greg, Pastor Greg, what, uh, Minister Greg, what would you say, um, just in light of all of that, uh, what verse or verses really jumped out at you uh, as we try to wrap this up? Um, I would definitely say Philippians 3.15. And before I quote that, I'm just reminded of um, an experience I had back in middle school with a science project. And the thing is... The funny thing is my uh, teacher said, if you can't test it, you can't do your project on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why Holy Spirit just told me that, but I feel like in this time, if our faith isn't testable, it's not true faith. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel as if God tests our faith to say, yeah, you're, you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself Christ-like, you say you're following but am I able to test your faith without That's good. Your, uh, your balance shifting? That's am good. I able to test your faith without you sinking in the water like Peter did? Yes. And to just go off that, I wanted to quote uh, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And it says, All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. And that, just to sum it up, there's so many things that God is saying to us. Um, and we're, um, as the body of Christ, we are very mature. But there's even some things that maturity can't define. Mm -hmm. So God himself is saying that, um, or Paul in this text, he's saying that if it is, uh, if you don't, understand if it's not clear to you God will make it clear to you mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that we needed in this year mm -hmm. um, my my father pastor Greg said 2020 vision is close to perfect but we have to realign realign our vision to get in the cadence of heaven and really yes. say God what am I what am I missing what's not being clear to me we have to first say God okay, I, am I missing something? Am I missing the mark? Am I not pressing on enough? So one of the things that this verse, one of the things that this verse and this passage of scripture is saying that if it is not clear to you, God will make it clear. Yeah. So you need to come to God and just say, okay, God, I'm not getting it. Help me. Just a simple, just a simple help. And the Bible says he's Abba. Abba means father. So he's our father. He's always there. He always will be there. So you just just come to him and just say, what's not being clear? What's not being made clear to me? And I would just say, 
just to simply do that just to ask him and just keep pressing on with everything yes. um you have no matter if you yes. feel like it or not you owe it to yourselves and everybody around you just to keep pressing on you owe it yes. to your heavenly father to just keep pressing on especially in this time do it for the people that aren't able to do it themselves press on for them and press on for yourself so i would just say just to keep press on in this time amen amen and those are uh good good solid words and why my prayer is that you uh, you've heard that and embrace it and that the holy spirit will um, just highlight and minister that to you long after we we're done here even while you're sleeping that god will just minister to um, your spirit man um, and be not weary in well-doing okay god has seen every tear he's felt every pain uh, he's seen perhaps every disappointment uh, he's seen all the, the joyous times, it hasn't all been negative in 2020, um, but God has seen it all. He's felt it all. We, we don't have a high priest that is out of touch with what we're feeling. God is into the details. So everything that you felt, and, 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 and watch this, that you know what, um, he see, he's seen every tear, and our tears are prayers too. The Bible says that he bottles them. It's, they're on a ledger. So he, he's making an account of, of our tears. And so there are times when we don't even have the words. And we're perhaps just groaning. Just, you know, our spirit man is, is we can't get anything out. And then sometimes it's just our tears are speaking and going up, ushering, you know, our uh, up before the Lord. So be not weary in well-doing. God has seen everything that you're, you've gone through. Uh, he knows what you're feeling right now as you sit there uh, in that room there. Uh, God knew what you would, uh, where you would be seated. He knew what you would be wearing. He knows what you're going through emotionally. He knows what you're going through spiritually. He knows the things that uh, you have uh, before him, the petitions, the prayers, the needs, the wants. And, and watch this. Um, the vision um, that God has spoken over you, whether it was five years ago, 10, 15, 20, 25, however long it's been since God marked you, man or woman of God, okay, it has not died. The year of 2020, uh, COVID-19, coronavirus, uh, cannot and will not defer or deter uh, the calling, the vision that God has given you. And so that's why we've come uh, to just to encourage you and to speak words of life uh, into you and over you. We stand in agreement with you um, at this time. So, Pastor Greg. Uh, minute, I keep calling. He's he's going to be a pastor. He's your pastor. Yes. Um, any closing uh, thoughts or anything that you'd like to just encourage um, our brothers and sisters, the the men and women of God there. Um, don't let this conference, don't let uh, whatever the specific term for this um, gathering is called, don't let it uh, be for nothing. Don't let, don't just let this be another experience. Yes. Don't just let this be another message. Don't just let this be another. Okay, I'm here just to um, say, God, I'm submitting 99 percent. All right, what do you want to do? What do you want to say? Mm -hmm. Let this be a true, life changing, transformational encounter. Amen. And I would just say that, and just say, keep pressing on because. Um, you never know what pressing on will do for you or other yes. people. Yes. Um, we live in a time where it's life or death, literally and spiritually. And a lot of people are dying physically and spiritually. So we need to intercede and yes. lift up the people that are struggling and lift up yourselves, ourselves, um, just um, to do that. So I would just say just to do that fully submitting 100% and just pressing on 100% and not letting this be in vain. Amen. So, yes, yes. That, that's 
that's good. And we want to, again, I'm, I'm so grateful and honored to uh, have my son, again, a voice to this generation with me. And we, we just want to, uh, the next few minutes, uh, if you would there, um, just lift those hands up and just extend those and, and, and just in a posture of surrender. And we're going to, even though we're thousands of miles away, uh, over 8,000 miles to be exact, um, there's no distance. God is not limited at all in prayer. So God, we thank you for our brothers and sisters. I thank you for the conference. I thank you, God, that it's been fruitful. I thank you, Lord, for a move of God that is beyond measure. I thank you, God, that you, that everyone that is in attendance, came uh, and received exactly what they, not just what they uh, wanted, but what they needed, God, to continue on the rest of this year and into the year of 2021. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, I thank you, God, that you would just cover them, every family, every ministry, in the name of Jesus. We prophetically speak over and into your life. Holly, where you are now is not where you will always be. And so I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Nixon, uh, who's um, been a great friend of myself and our family. I thank you, God, for Pastor Julius. And I thank you, God, again, for every man and woman of God uh, there in attendance. Um, I pray, God, that there would be, um, not just because we were a part of this, but that, well, there would be, uh, again, fruit and testimonies, God, that of your greatness, that, Lord, that you would strengthen them, Lord, and give them peace beyond all understanding, and that, Lord, they would continue to make your name famous in the earth. And so we thank you. And we praise you, God. We thank you. Bless them, God. Strengthen in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And thank you so much, Pastor Nexon, Pastor Julius. Um, this has been an honor. Uh, we're humbled. And again, it's been a great pleasure to be able to share with you uh, with my son, Minister Greg, uh, when this COVID-19 and all this is over, we plan to be there and perhaps our entire family uh, to be there in person uh, to share with you. So God bless you. Uh, have a great rest of the, the conference and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.